Okay, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. Today is October 2nd. It is fantastic Friday, and we've got an awesome training up ahead. But first, just a couple of quick announcements. Our quote of the day today is, fearless is an empty word. It means we're doing things that don't scare us. Brave is when, despite the fear, we have the courage to take action. Mark your calendar and clear these two days. You don't want to miss these two days of training. This is our regionals, October 23rd and 24th. We will be doing two full days of training and uh, we're going to be learning from, from leaders from the nation as well as more local leaders. So I'm excited for regionals, mark your calendar. Also, we have our nationals dates for nationals, <laughs> for national conference. March 18th through the 20th, 2021. I am so excited for nationals. Again, a couple days of really, really phenomenal training. And we have our leaders retreat dates, August 13th through the 17th, 2021. We're going to Mexico, Cabo San Lucas. I am very, very excited for leaders retreat. I believe this would be my fourth, third, third leaders retreat. And it's just an absolute blast. I've met so many people and made so many great connections in a beautiful, beautiful place around the world. Uh, last year we went to Panama. The year before we went to Cancun. So always going somewhere beautiful and fun and uh, rubbing shoulders with leaders from the company. Feel free to take a screenshot. This is our weekly agenda as of lately. Yesterday we had a great um, medley of meetings, I guess I could call it. I was a part of the intro presentation as well as a follow-up. I was popping into both meetings and anyway, just a lot, a lot going on for our guests to take advantage of. Uh, not yesterday, but Wednesday's house tour. And I guess we did do it yesterday as well in Spanish was a great experience. Um, a gentleman named Gavin is working on this one in Salt Lake City. He purchased it for 310,000 and the ARV is 480. So he will be walking away with a $40,000 net profit in just a short six to eight weeks. So congratulations, Gavin. And these house tours are a really, really great exposure for your guests. So every Wednesday, we're doing an English house tour at 7 p.m. And every Thursday, we have many events going on, lots going on on Thursday nights. We have the same house tour as on Wednesday. However, we do it in Spanish. And then on Thursdays, also, we have our Pillars of Wealth intro presentation. Follow-up and funding workshop, as I mentioned. We also have onboarding for new students and guests are also welcome to this. We have multiple study groups built around real estate. So our fix and flip study group, multifamily, short-term rental, wholesaling, and essentials built around, or excuse me, essentials is available in both English and Spanish. And then there's also a business development study group. So lots going on, as I mentioned, every Thursday at 7 p.m. A couple people asking me on Messenger for the passcode, so let me provide them with that really quickly. I appreciate your patience this morning. If you're just jumping on the call, Zoom has been throwing me some curveballs, so we are taking it as we go. All right. If you were not aware, we have a special event coming up next Friday, Friday the 9th. Um, typically on Saturday the 10th, that would have been our Super Saturday. However, because of the regionals being on the 24th, um, Heather is going to be doing her intensive on the day that we would be doing Super Saturday, which uh, Michael Huggins wanted to have Eric Counts as a special guest for our Super Saturday. So since we don't have a Super Saturday this month, we're calling it Fabulous Friday. So on Friday the 9th, just for a few hours in the evening from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, we will be doing a training with Eric Counts. Eric Counts has a new marketing tool that he is going to be sharing with us. So you do not want to miss this training. It's going to be awesome. And as I mentioned, I don't have a slide for this that I'm about to mention here, but um, on the 10th, we have an intensive with 
Heather Herring. She is our fix and flip instructor. She's done over 850 fix and flips in the span of about 10 years. So you don't want to miss that either. That's on the 10th and I'll get more details on that on Monday. Um, but also more importantly, you wanna get guests to that event with, with Heather. It's a very, very powerful event. And we are recording, we're on, we're not on Facebook Live today, another technical difficulty, but I will make sure to get this posted to Facebook Live, but we are on YouTube. So make sure that you take advantage of the Facebook page as well as the YouTube channel. A lot of important announcements there. And with the YouTube channel, I got started about four years ago and these calls were going strong when I got started. So I know that there's at least five years worth of a lot of value on the YouTube channel. So take advantage of that. All right, so today we get to learn from Lily Puertas. Lily has decided, well, she has taken on the challenge to train with us every Friday. And so instead of Monday through Thursday, we've been doing that, as most of you know, for many, many years. And just as of last week, we've added on Fridays with Lily and Lily has a very, very powerful story. And I'm just so excited to continue forward on Fridays learning from her. So some of Lily's background, she uh, worked with the organization Rich Dad Poor Dad, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And she was a Spanish coach for Latin countries for the company. She's been a real estate agent since 2006, helping hundreds of families. Lily is from, from Peru and she's now living in Utah since 1996. Lily's dreams to be financially free have haunted her for years, and thanks to Renatus and the education, the community, she can say that she has achieved that goal. Lily has created enough passive income through real estate that it covers her mortgage, covers all of her bills, and essentially all of her basic needs, and now what she is focused on is creating passive income that will cover her luxuries. So take notes today. I'm excited for what Lily has to share. Good morning, Lily. How are you? Ah, oh, here I am, okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Let's see if I can go back here. Uh, how you guys been doing? Thanks, Kili, for the introduction. Every time you say that makes me feel important. <laughs> and actually, I'm important. I have to believe that myself. <clears throat> um, well, how are, how are you today? How's everyone? How was, how, hope you're all doing a wonderful time, doing great. How was your week? How, how was your week? And, it's, and since this is a new technology, it's hard for me just to see what I'm going to present and see each of your faces. So I have to choose. So hopefully you can see me because I cannot see you right now, but <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Let me mention a valuable experience I went through. This nice couple, uh, invited a few people to show us uh, their um, some tips and techniques about short-term rentals. It was valuable tips, but what impresses me the most is when they said, when we started this business, we were, we didn't know how to do it. We had education, but we needed, we were looking for support and connections and we found it. Now we want to do the same and do the support and connection and help with connections to others that are starting this uh, strategy. So that really touched my heart. That's the abundance law because they didn't have to do it. You know, a lot of people that attended the, the, their event were Renato's people and they were taking the time to show us how they're doing this, what not to do. And you say, wow, this is incredible. This is, this is what is Renato's about, you know? that wants to serve others and because of we because of we do that the universe comes back to you 10 times more so yeah i wanted to share that <clears throat> um, sometimes our actions speak louder than our words that's what i asked i asked you initially have you talked to anyone about real estate this past week well i did <laughs> i did and actually I did a three-way call with one of my um, team uh, members and uh, we were using her warm market. I talked to Michael and he gave me this script. I just trans translated it to Spanish 
And it was great. You know, it was great. We had good times. People say, no, I don't want to do this. Everything, you know, we had everything. But we're very strong, prepared to the responses. Um, so I think it went well. Out of that, I think we got a, a possible lead. We'll see how, how it goes. But um, when I do this type of a call with my uh, people's warm market, of course, we, achieve, we, we hope we can get a, a lead. But at this point, what, we're, what I'm working on is take the, take the discipline to do that uh, on a consistent basis. Okay, and start losing those fears when you talk to people, start losing those, those fears to rejection. So that's our main goal right now. So I can improve myself and help my team to improve as well. So um, as I said, sometimes our actions speak louder than our words. <clears throat> so that's why today what I would like to share some a uh, few points like, uh, uh, like we are investors or potential investors. Like, do you feel like you're an investor? So do you feel inside your heart that you're an investor or do you believe that you're an investor? When I started this business back in, well, when I pretend to be a real estate investor back in 2006, one of the things that I, I learned from Kiyosaki or from training that I took is believe that you're an investor. With that, thought you can conquer worlds. So when I joined Renatos and I was, I was like, uh, I mean, I had some knowledge, but I didn't do much. The only thing that I carry with me is the belief that I am an investor. So I want to pass this to you today through some tips. Okay. But the, uh, <clears throat> this may improve our uh, implementing our lives, these tips that I'm going to share with you. Some of you perhaps already are doing it. Hopefully this reinforce your knowledge. Let me start with this question. And Kili, if you know some participation, some questions, let me know. Let me start with this question to all of you. What is financial freedom to you? What is financial freedom to you? Do you want me to answer that? Go ahead. All right, I have an answer. To me, financial freedom, is the ability to go buy something and not worry about where the funds are gonna come from. And that could be um, a truck, it could be a house, it could be anything that I need to spend money on. Just having the freedom to buy it without worrying about where I'm gonna, how I'm gonna buy, pay for my bills next month. If I wanna go travel and just, okay, I can afford that, no big deal. That to me is financial freedom. Wonderful thing. Thanks for, for participating. And yeah, and there's um, several uh, concepts about financial freedom. One of them is what you just shared. Exactly. I mean, do whatever you want with your time, with your money, you know, be uh, living the life that you want. But this financial freedom has a process. Because let's say if I'm a W2 and I don't have enough reserves or no passive income, going from there to living my dreams it's a big gap right now, right? So how can I really make this happen? And sometimes when we have these big goals and we are kind of far, far from them and the fact that we may not achieve it or getting close to it may make us, may make us say, oh, you know what, this is not working. It's not, it's, it's not happening. So let's, uh, let me just also mention the, <clears throat> the, the financial freedom concept that I learned which is also similar to what you just said, <clears throat> excuse me, is, um, how do I say this in English, I know in Spanish, it is uh, the time that you have to live without you working. How can I say this? Let's say, let me give you an example. If I have 3,000, no, $10,000 in my savings and my expenses are 3,000 a month, how many days or, or how many months or financial freedom do I have? You About have three. Three, right? Exactly. So basically, after three, I have to work. After three months, my savings are out and I have to work or create something. So basically, 
uh, is the time, the money that comes every month through passive income to cover your, first of all, your basic expenses and then your luxuries and then living the life that you want, right? So we can start building that little by little, but we, we have, if we have the goal, we can certainly get it. So the first one, let me go back real quick to my screen. Let's see. Hold on. And excuse me if I have to share this. Okay, let's see. Where am I? Um, Am I able to share? Oh, yes, here, here I am. And I wanna share here and here. There we go. Can you guys see that? They're working, okay? So 12 habits will help you reach financial freedom. 12 habits that will help, will help you reach your financial freedom. So number one, set life, oops goals so like you said what type of life that i want to have what type of life i i mean what i would like to be in life what's my purpose start thinking about those goals those big goals and uh and at what age this would be this should be achieved at what age i remember when i was the well i don't want to say my age but anyway i'll share it anyway when I was four years old, I said, when I'm 50, I'm going to be financially free. <clears throat> that was my goal, you know, I, but I wasn't doing the right steps to achieve that at when I was supposed to be 50. When I joined Renatos, I was 47, three years ago, and I was way far behind, way far behind. I only had a, a rental that gave me like a 200, 250 cash flow every month. And not only that, that rental was a pain. I wanted just to sell it because I had bad tenants. And someone told me, ah, don't worry, Lily, when, it's, when the uh, mortgage is paid off, you will keep the whole rental. And I thought, oh my goodness, when the rental is paid off, I'll be underground, I'll be dead maybe. That's not gonna work for me. And I realized it must be an other way, it must be other ways. I've been thinking and looking for those other and faster ways to achieve financial freedom. Again, I cannot stop saying thanks to Renatos, thanks to the knowledge, thanks to the community, thanks to the creativity, thanks to talking to other investors and you know, catching their ideas here and there, I think I accomplished my uh, first level of financial freedom. Thank God. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later that you don't have to invest a lot of money. If you understand the um, return of investment, a num if you understand those numbers, it will be easy for you to, to take effective investments. Okay, so number one is set your goals. So uh, once you have your goals, what you want to uh, do in life, let's say you say, I want to have 10,000 passive income every month. So let's say that's your goal. I'm saying I can be bigger, lower, I don't know. So next, count backwards to your current age and establish financial milepost at the regular intervals. Okay, so say, okay, if I want, if I have, if I want to have $10,000 uh, um, cash flow every month, and I have none today, and I wanna achieve this in 10 years or in five years, I don't know, then you have to start working. Okay, this is how much I'm gonna make this year. And this is how I'm gonna work every month to achieve that yearly goal. And don't stop until you get it, until you achieve that. It's gonna be easy? Of course not. Will be discouragement? Of course. When stuff doesn't go the way you want, and you can say like, oh, it's not working. Or you can say, my dreams are bigger. I keep fighting for this. I, can, I keep looking for opportunities or ways to achieve this goal. One thing that really, I mean, I'm not saying like this will not work for you, but what worked for me and is the fact that I realized I'm not getting any younger. And I thought myself, I don't wanna be with my tank of oxygen to start traveling the world. I don't want to be like with uh, painting my joints or, or having a health issues to start just doing the life that I want. No, I want to do it right now. I want to do it right now. That was keeping, keeping me pushing and looking for um, ways to find it. And again, thanks to Renatus, I'm glad. I'm so glad that I 
finally uh, got my first level of financial freedom. And I'm saying, I'm not saying this to brag. No, I mean, anyone can do it. As I said, your dream has to be bigger than your obstacles. Number two, oops, let's see if it let me. Number two, make a budget. What? Make a budget. Some people don't like to make, to do budget. And sometimes you think, oh, I have enough money. You know, I'm making fix and flips. I'm making this good money. If you just keep your level of expenses the same, even if you make more money, you will succeed. Let me tell you an experience. Back in 2006, I made a lot of money in real estate. It was a great market, like right now, for instance, as a realtor, I mean, I was like selling houses, helping people, a lot of commissions, and I bought a, a half million dollars house. At that time, it was like a lot of money. I bought a lot of furniture. Oh my goodness, I traveled. And when the crash happened, was no money coming. So I realized that I, big, I did a big mistake because I didn't really work on my foundation. I work on the luxuries first. So because at that time, the first industry that went down was real estate. I had no clients, no one able to buy a house, no, couldn't qualify for anything. So I realized that I was the asset. I couldn't work, no income, right? So those words that I heard for a while, like build passive income, sound really strong, really stronger in my mind build passive income. So if, if you have passive income, doesn't matter what economy you are facing because people will always have to uh, uh, pay rent or find a place to live, right? So it doesn't matter what economy you will face if you have enough portfolio of rentals or passive income. And basically I only have one rental, the other passive income is coming through seller finance. <clears throat> okay, so uh, as I said, uh, make a budget and stick to it is the best way to guarantee that your bills are paid and savings are on track. It's also a regular routine that reinforces your goals and bolsters resolve against the temptation to splurge. Okay, sometimes we like to spend. I mean, I know it's sometimes it's human to spend. If you never had money before and you suddenly you have a lot, oh, you just wanna live the life. And it's human to think that or to do so, but remember, work on your foundation first. Okay, and making a budget and living and sticking to the budget is a, a key to, to that. Number three, pay off credit cards in full. So that's other thing that people tend to think that the credit cards are an extension of their salary and it's not and it's not um so if you use your credit cards make sure that you just you just spend what you're going to pay at the end of every month let's say you went into the situation where you just got out of control and then you just are working on um and you have some like high high debt well use velocity banking and use discipline to start paying, working on paying off those debts. Credit cards and similar high interest consumer loans are toxic to wealth building. Tell you for sure, this is so true. Make it a point to pay off the full, the full balance in uh, the full balance each month. Um, again, I, I, I use my experience or my, my, yeah, my experience. So perhaps you can learn for, for what I went through. Um, I used to be the person, I mean, like maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, to use some, to live on my credit cards. So I'm going to pay it. Oh, I'm going to pay it. So right now I'm going to pay it. I realized there was a lot of interest and also realized that the more credit cards you, uh, or the more debt that you have in your credit cards affects your ratio, therefore your credit score, therefore the ability to get better interest. And then I realized, I remember, this is true. I remember in 2004 or five, I paid all of my debt. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna celebrate this. I will never get into debt anymore. So wrong because 
I didn't check work on my mind, on my habits, on my discipline. Two years later, I was in debt again. Two years later, I was in debt again. So it's not a matter of money problems is not solved with money. It's solved with discipline. It's solved with the way you're thinking. It's solved working on your goals and establishing your foundation. Okay, number four. Create, and this is a good one. I love this. This is what I learned in Renatus. Create lines of credits, HELOCs, PLOCs, whatever. That includes line of credits, personal line of credit, business line of credit, HELOCs, all of the locks. <laughs> so credit, credit line, line of credits are wonderful, are so wonderful. I think understanding how to work the line of credits has given me the, the platform to achieve my goals. I don't know if you're working or, or you know this, but if you don't, review your class with Velocity Banking. Find, if you don't, um, doesn't matter if you don't have a house, work on a personal line of credits. Maybe in another time I can explain you how to achieve those line of credit easily, but the majority is that you need to have good credit. Work on your credit first. With, if you have good credit, maybe above 700, you can go to any credit union and request 10 or 15K with no income um, proof. If you have 700, they can, they can certain, they will approve you. If you say, hey, I'm making 100K a year, they will prove you that you're not making 100 or not. But again, it's if you have a good score. Um, that's how I started. I went, remember I joined Renatos, or well, I rejoined Renatos back in 2017. And the first thing that I did is I went to this credit union and asked for a 15K line of credit. My, the majority of my credits at that time were like a 5,000, 6,000, you know, 7,000 the most. And, uh, and asking for a 15 was like, no, they're not going to give me that. Oh my goodness, what I'm going to do. And guess what? They gave me the 15K with the right questions. And then I got another 10K with America First, same day. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is happening. And then when I tried to get a HELOC, I realized that I wasn't doing my taxes correctly. And it took me two years to finally get a HELOC. But that was okay. I mean, I knew I have to, if I, because I didn't do correctly my taxes, I realized that I have to wait two years and I wait patiently. But that doesn't mean that I didn't do it. I didn't do a, a velocity banking. I was doing chunk velocity banking. Remember those 15K that I got from Mountain America? I got 15K and pay some of my credit cards and work on velocity banking. When that was paid, I got to pay another debt until all of my debts were paid. Currently, I don't have any, any uh, consumer debt. And I'm glad to say that. And not because I now I understand uh, the power of not having consumer debt. I have good debt, remember. Bad debt takes money out of your pocket. Good debt puts money in your pocket. Like rentals, for instance. Um, number five. Oh, before I forget this thing, um, in this number four, start the habit or paying yourself first. Paying yourself first. Paying yourself first is, is not like, oh, I'm going to pay myself to enjoy whatever I want. No, paying yourself is setting a certain amount of money every month out of your paycheck and make a goal to put it in, in through investment. Let's say, uh, if I take 10 or 20% of, out of my income, I, put in, I set it aside to invest in a property, perhaps. Of course, the first uh, um, installment won't help, but if you do like this thing for a whole year, by the end of the year, you will have money to invest. But if you never set aside any money, you will never have money. Unless, I mean, that's several things that you can use. If you're the you two, start setting aside a small amount of money every month. Uh, again, work on getting your line of credit. Okay, I, 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 I want to say, I promise you, if you do that, you will have, if you have, a, if you have a helo, at least, that's, that's the best. 
If you have a heal of you, you your life will change uh, dramatically. So like my payment used to be like 2,200 and now it's uh, what? I think it's 1,500 through line of credits. Anyway, let's go back to uh, number five. This is another good one is a start investing. I think I mentioned that already, start investing in real estate, of course. And uh, don't wait until you have all of the 20% down to say, oh, I have, to. because usually as an investor, we have to, to buy a pro an investment property, we have to have technically 20% down. Well, if you if you are part of an artist, you don't have to have a 20% down. If you know and learn to be creative, you don't have to pay 20% down. But the thing is, okay, what, think, uh, analyze your, your situation, what is your reality right now? And there's a lot of strategies that you can use. For instance, short-term rentals is a good one and doesn't need a lot of money, but it can give you a lot of return. Let's say you want to start also working on more real estate portfolios. Uh, let me sh uh, share a few examples that I did to acquire properties. <clears throat> I want to tell you the good ones and the bad ones that I did. <laughs> the first one, I got my education and I thought, I mean, I know this. I've been taking classes for fix and flip for a while. I know how to do this. And I didn't take, I didn't uh, read my classes. And I said, I know how to do this. And I bought my first fix and flip. And when I got it, honestly, I cried because I didn't know what to do next. I didn't have a team. I didn't have anything. I didn't have any contractors available. I didn't have any, any repair money. Well, I have my credit cards, but I didn't know how to use it. I didn't use a good contract with, for the contractor. And, the, and I didn't follow the, the right procedure, so that that first deal was a disaster and i realized i should have uh reviewed my classes before i buy the property but thanks and at that time those three or four months while i was rehabbing the property i was reviewing my classes understanding the power of building relationships and i talked to my fellows uh, investors and they said lily do this do that talk to these people the house had uh was ready to, to be sold and and I never checked the meth, so the house had, had meth. I mean, was totally rehab and I never checked the meth levels. So they have to start all over, but basically. I almost cried. I mean, actually I cried, I almost died, I want to say. <laughs> but the, what I did after this is I realized that, uh, when some friends told me, what if you do a combined strategy? What do you mean? Well, uh, get a, a, um, a permanent financing and do a, a seller a seller finance. Yay! And that will give you some cash flow, monthly cash flow. And that's what I did. And that's what I did. And but wait a minute, I didn't have good income. I mean, I had good income, but I couldn't prove it because my taxes were not done properly. Did I stop me? Of course not. I found a credit partner. And the credit partner bought the house for me. And up to this point, I'm still making cash flow out of that property. Did I put any money? No. I mean, I, all of the money, when I, I did the rehab, when I do the um, permanent financing, everything was paid off. All of the, the contractor, hard money, everything was paid off. And basically, the cash flow that I receive every month from that property is infinite return of investment because there's no money in. So when you heard that you need 20% down? Not exactly, no, you don't, because there's a way you can do, you can start generating uh, um, passive income through these strategies. Okay, number six. If you guys think like I speak fast, let me know. I know you speak fast. I speak fast. I'll try to speak slow for you. <clears throat> okay, so one more thing. <laughs> Achieve financial freedom can be very difficult in the face of growing debt, medical issues, and overspending. That's 
overspending is like, uh, I don't know, something that we have to stop, but it is possible with discipline and careful planning. Remember, it's, it's possible with discipline and careful planning. We are tempting to spend more than we have, but remember, think about your dream, think about your foundations. Think about that if you do, if you work on your foundation right now, maybe two or three or four years, you will live the life that you want. Um, let's see here. Number six was, uh, what's your credit? I think I will talk about this, but uh, understand your credit. We have a class about this with uh, Eric Count. What's your credit? Do you know, perhaps you know already, but I'm gonna reinforce this concept that there's five currencies, time, money. So sometimes people are selling their time for money, right? You go to work, you give your time and they give you money. And sometimes they only use those two currencies. But I learn and I use so frequently these other three types of currencies, credit, knowledge, and relationships. Those are my three currencies that I use the most. And that's how I guess most of my, that's how I got most of my properties. So credit is one of them. Credit is, I mean, this year I refinanced one, two, three properties, things that I was building my credit. So, um, remember that, that, that currency, okay? What's your credit? Uh, <clears throat> seven. Oops. Negotiate. It's number seven. Many Americans are hesitant to negotiate for goods and services, worrying that it makes them seem cheap. Overcome this cultural handicap and you could save thousands each year. Small businesses in particular tend to be open to negotiations where buying in bulk or repeat business can open the doors to good discounts. Okay, so negotiate, we have a class for this. In fact, in my country, we always negotiate. We never pay full price. I think it's a cultural thing. We, we always ask for a discount. But so, and we can use that also in our favor. Number eight, continuous education. Kind of, sorry, continuous education. And we have the best education ever. I mean, I, I can't stop to be impressed by the education we have. I haven't read all, all of my classes yet. The only classes that I took so far besides my essentials is a fix and flip, um, a sum of seller finance. And I think that was it. And I was start doing it. However, I don't know if you guys know, but Dane Clark is doing a class on Thursdays and he challenged us to learn these other classes that Jay Massey is, is providing. And was like, oh my goodness, this class is, and I start like, uh, started to, to see some of the class. Those topics are amazing. I mean, there is so much that we can do. Remember, knowledge is power and real estate is not something that, that is a state quiet. We have to keep updating all the time. So thanks to this education, we have that. We have updated real estate education. Why do I say that? Remember that I mentioned that I was working for, well, I want to say this, but other, other, other real estate industries. Well, they sell the same education that works in the United States to other countries or the same outdated education. Sad. So when I see, I, when I saw Renato's, oh, this is updated. Not only a better education and fantastic education, but we also have a community that help us, that make us keep thinking in the right way. Because when we fail or we, or we don't achieve what we want or the, th the things doesn't go the way we want it, we're not alone. We talk to other investors in the community and they, they kind of uh, give you the support that you need. And I think for me, that was a major key. <clears throat> Nine. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna move fast. I want to just uh, uh, proper maintenance. Proper maintenance. Okay. 
So take good care of a, a property, makes everything from cars and lawnmowers to shoes and clothes last longer, especially properties. <laughs> uh, the cost of maintenance is a fraction of the cost of replacement. It's an investment not to be missed, especially in properties um, team. When you see something that is not working correctly, especially something with water, fix it right away because water is damage, damages the property really bad. So if you see something that is not working, I mean, pay uh, someone to do it, take care of it right now instead of work, have to replace and make a big expenses. Uh, one other thing that I wanna mention to you, learn to know the difference between the things that you want and the things that you need. Do I want it? Do I need it? Do I want it? Do I need it? You know, I used that phrase for a while while I was building my foundation. Of course, I want to live the life. I Man, I don't want you to live miserable lives. I want you to enjoy life, to live passion lives, you know, to do whatever I want. But it has to be a way to start. You just cannot jump, living the life right now with no foundation. <clears throat> Number 10 and is living, live below. I, I don't like much this, but it's necessary for now. Live below your means. I'm the type of person that I want to live good life. I like good life. I like good, um, you know, good hotels. I mean, restaurants, everything. I, I, and I realized that I don't have to be ashamed of for, for what I want. That's me. But I realized that I have to work for that. I don't want to live on my credit cards. So mastering, remember, I added live below your means and I added this will be only for a brief moment. Just keep in mind only be for a short period of time. Okay, As if you work harder and faster, you don't, you don't have to just live below your means all the time. Mastering a frugal lifestyle by having a mindset of living life to the fullest with, a, with less is not so hard. Indeed, many wealthy individuals developed a habit of living below their means before rising to affluence. Okay, remember. So sometimes you wanna live the life again okay, without having the uh, foundation, okay. Number 11, almost there, we're almost there. Uh, well, this is easy, and this maybe will fi uh, get financial advice of when. Um, excuse me. Once you get to a point where you have amassed a decent amount of wealth, uh, be a liquid or tangible assets that are aren't ready, ready readily available to convert cash, get financial advisor to educate you and help make decisions. So once you start having a good portfolio of properties or other investments, think about how you can cash them immediately when you need it. One thing I've been using and may, may help you, I'm not a big fan of having savings, a big savings in my bank, I, I'm not. I only have a small amount, let's say, I don't know, maybe a couple of thousand in my savings. What I do, it is up to you. I buy silver and gold coins because that never lose uh, value, but the money in my bank, it does. So if you wanna start doing that and put it in a safety box or something, that will be a good way to liquidate when you need the money, when you need the cash. <clears throat> Number 12, take care of Put it in uppercase because it's very important. Take care of your health. The principle of proper <clears throat> maintenance also applies to the body. Invest in good health with regular visits to doctors and dentists and follow health advice about any problems you encounter. Don't leave it for, for later. Many problems can be helped or prevented or even prevented with lifestyle changes such as more exercise and healthier diet. So this is very important, uh, dear, my, this is very, very important team, because if you have all the money, but you're sick, I mean, doesn't make any sense, right? I want to travel the world, but I'm sick. I have all the money, I have this passive income, but I'm sick. So take care of your body, take care of yourself, take care of not only of your, of your physical body, also your mental health. You no, know? keep, keep a condition in your mindset. 
um, keep, I mean, reinforce your dreams. I don't know. I mean, there's so many books out there that give you a health mindset and do exercises to keep your body again healthy. So those are the 12 um, tips for um, achieve financial freedom. And I hope that helped you. I, I wanted to share, share with you something else, but I think the time is uh, about seven minutes. I will open for questions. Hey, Lily. Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, I was just, you know, wondering, you know, did you, is there a book that you use for all this 12 or are you just like getting this from different sources? Did I freeze or did she freeze? <laughs> Sorry, it's just me. I don't listen. Oh, okay. I didn't hear anything. Okay. Uh, I was asking if, um, are you using a book um, out of where you're training today? Is there a book, you know, that you use or is it like you're just getting it from different sources? Can you hear me? Now we yeah, can. I can hear you. I'm I sorry can hear you. That. Sorry, I didn't hear you, your question. And I'm moving a little bit. I don't know if it's the, this room or what. So yeah, tell me, what was your question, Kilda? Okay. Yeah, my question is now, was there a book that you were using for all, you know, to get this information from? Or are you getting it from different sources or? Oh, I got it from a, from a, a website looking for this information. And let me tell you what it was. Sometimes I think it's this room that didn't give me enough uh, internet or stable internet, but uh, sorry, <laughs> I have to work on this. Okay. Uh, okay, that's fine. Here's information. Uh, the, it's investopedia.com, investopedia.com. Okay. And next, next, uh, next week, uh, next Friday, I'm gonna show you this one. I don't know. Let me share. Uh, well, I think. Uh, well, doesn't let me share, but that's okay. That's okay. For next time, just wanna mention that I'm going to show you how to work on your uh, balance sheet how you can work on your balance sheet. And this is what we're gonna work on about um, your income statement. So just come prepared and uh, we will realize where the, our sources are coming from and how we can start working on passive income. So we will check this next uh, next week. Thanks, Kili. Back okay. to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you so much, Lily. What an amazing training today. Appreciate all the value that you provided for us. Again, I wanted to just apologize to everybody because today we were thrown a curveball with a passcode as well as a waiting room. So Skylar and I are working on getting that cleaned up so that next week it'll just be a, a smooth login for everybody. So again, I apologize for the complications with getting logged in today. Um, we will see you this weekend. Have a great weekend, Thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Keely. We'll Thank you, everybody. Too. Take care. Right. Yeah. We'll see you at the other side. <laughs> yeah, bye. Yeah.